All right. I like the walkout music. Yeah, so, uh, so, Congressman, you are the chair of the House Republican Conference. And, yeah. and just to be clear so everybody understands what that means, you're the one that is supposed to bring all the House Republicans together. I mean, you actually yes. convene the meetings. That's you right. actually, the, wow. The, the 247. How's uh, that going? Uh, Republicans from every corner of this country, <laughs> yeah, uh, bringing us together. Yes, well, well, certainly, Speaker Boehner's announcement on Friday has sent shockwaves uh, throughout Capitol Hill and throughout the country. You know, and, it was, and, it, and let's be clear, that right. announcement came at your meeting. That's true. It was 9 a.m. Friday morning. Your regular, the regular gathering of the House Republicans. Um, I lead this this uh, meeting each week, uh, and. I had just invited Speaker Boehner to come to the podium and give his remarks when I was slipped this little note that said, the Speaker is going to be announcing his retirement. <laughs> so what, so you, had, yes. you had no indication no. before he no. was walking up to the no. podium. No, and I, you read it and I'm kind of, what does this mean? <laughs> uh, although it was clear what was going on and I, I, I stood there and then listened to him wow. um, announce his news. And it, and it was unexpected. And I was, I really thought that we were in a better place. The Pope had just been to Capitol Hill, first time for the Pope to visit, address a joint session of Congress, and, and it had been such a positive day for, for Congress. And then, then um, obviously, the Speaker <clears throat> decided later on um, that evening, on Thursday evening, that, you know what, might be time for me to go. Now, it was striking. Uh, the news broke. There was the, uh, uh, the Family Values uh, Forum that was going on right. uh, in town with the presidential candidates. And the presidential candidates, including Marco Rubio, Ted mm -hmm. Cruz especially, mm -hmm. when they, they, they were celebrating this news mm -hmm. as if this was some great victory, in the case right. of Ted Cruz, mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that John Boehner had been vanquished. I mean, he's the Republican Speaker of the House. Right. Could, how do you, in, in brief, assess his legacy? Because so many other Republicans have been so critical and, frankly, like ungracious since, since right. he left. How, how, you worked closely with him. Right. What, what, what's his legacy? What kind of a speaker was right. he? Right. Well, in, in my role, I have had the opportunity to work very closely with Speaker Boehner. And through the years, I really believed that he was the right man at the right time to be leading us. And it didn't, it didn't mean, obviously, that... done or gotten more than what he did. What I saw in Speaker Boehner was someone that was trustworthy. You know, and I think day in and day out, that is why he remained Speaker as long as he did. The, the members really did trust uh, him when he told them something. It was like they, they knew that he, was, he wasn't playing games. And then the second part was that he made decisions based upon what he thought was good and right for America at the end of the day. And, you, and, and for, for me, you may not always agree with every decision, but you have to respect someone that is even willing to make the tough decisions at times. Maybe, maybe not something that even went over that well with the, the Republican Party as such, but someone who was really trying to do day in and day out what was best for the country and what was going to improve people's lives all across this country. Okay, so one of his last acts, because he still is speaker, he's not yes, stepping down until the true. end of the month. <clears throat> one of his last acts here was to bring up a bill yesterday mm -hmm. to fund the government temporarily right. just, just through uh, December 11th. I was amazed to watch that vote yesterday. You voted mm -hmm. yes. You I voted. Did. You voted against the government shutdown yesterday. 151 House Republicans voted yesterday to shut down the government. How uh, do you I would, run a conference <clears throat> mm -hmm. where you have that many who are willing to say, just because we're not getting what, everything we want, mm -hmm. we're not willing to pass a bill that would keep the lights on? Yeah, for those Republicans who voted against the continuing resolution to keep the government open, I really believe it was more a message to the Senate and it was a message to the president. There's a lot of frustration that we haven't been doing our just our basic job, our, our responsibility of getting a budget in place. I mean, that is, that's pretty fundamental. And every year, the federal government needs to get a budget in place. That's how you keep the yep. government running and operating. And, you know, and there were high hopes, high expectations at, in January of this year for the Republicans, especially having a Republican 
partner in the Senate, Republican a Republican Senate, majority. Senate, Republican yes. House, you yes. all should be able to yes. do it just and like we that. Got, right? We got the, the budget resolution passed yep. earlier than ever. We went to work on the appropriations bills, and the, and the House was, uh, we, really, we really were, this was a, a high priority for us to get these appropriations bills done, because that is the way that we assert the power of the purse. That's the way that we, as legislators, really make clear when we do not agree with what the executive branch may be doing, if we want to address funding levels, if we want to not fund certain programs, or, right. you know, that's, that's where we get to really assert our power. And, and it was very disappointing. It was, it, was, it was very frustrating that not one of those bills passed the Senate. But this was a striking vote because... It, again, it, it's only to keep the government running temporarily so you can negotiate a longer-term deal. Right. And because it would have continued government funding as it is and as it's been for ages, which would include right. funding for Planned Parenthood. It, uh, it didn't include any funding for Planned Parenthood. Well, it didn't cut off funding for Planned Parenthood, right? That's, but there's no money. The money's already been spent. So. The, the money's already been spent. Yeah. So because it didn't affirmatively cut off Planned Parenthood, you had the, the, a, a large majority of Republicans saying, we, we'd rather see the government shut down. I mean, yeah. th this bill wouldn't have passed without all the Democrats voting, voting uh, uh, yes. And I mean, you voted yes, the leadership mm -hmm. voted yes, but most of your fellow Republicans voted no. Yeah, there, there, is a, a, there is a big frustration with status quo on Capitol Hill. And I, and I think that this vote just underscores the frustration with just status quo. And, the, and it is across the board. I think we're seeing that in the presidential played out from both Republicans and Democrats. Sure. This country wants to see Congress function. They want us to get things done. They want us to make decisions based upon what they think is best for the people that we represent. There's a whole bunch of people that are just, they see the arguing, they see the dysfunction, and they're just, they're just sick of it. And so okay. it's reflected in... The, the members, too. Okay, so now it becomes Kevin McCarthy's problem, assuming he, and you, you assume like I do, that he'll be the next Speaker of the House. Yes. Okay, so uh, good luck, Kevin McCarthy. I noticed that it was John Boehner who was singing after he uh, made his decision. It's Zippity true. Doo -dah, uh, and true. Uh, not, not Kevin McCarthy. So uh, McCarthy now is under, has faced some intense criticism because of what he said about the Benghazi Committee. Mm -hmm. He suggested that the Benghazi committee has succeeded, is, is mm. responsible for bringing down Hillary Clinton's poll numbers. Right. Said mm -hmm. that people now see her untrustable. Well, I think was his word. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, so what, I mean, what, first of all, what, what, do you, what do you make of what he said about that? Yeah, I, I really, I, I believe that Hillary's poll numbers really reflect people that do not view her as being trustworthy, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of questions related to whether or not she has been forthright, whether she's cooperated. Um, obviously, we've, it's been difficult to get the emails, et cetera. Um, but I, I do believe that the work that we're doing in the Benghazi Committee is very important. It's important that we know what happened that hey. evening in Benghazi. It is, it, we have a responsibility to do that. You know, there, we do not, we've not yet had important questions answered. Four Americans died. And, and it is appropriate that the legislative yes, branch uh, uh, ask we'll the questions and get here, the please. answers. Yes, it is. That, that, it, I, don't care. I don't care who's in the White House. I don't care who's the Secretary of State. On behalf of the American people, this is, this, yeah, this is where representative government, where the legislative branch does have a responsibility to, to hold the administration accountable and to ask the appropriate questions. And that so, is what the Benghazi is, committee is seeking to do. And Trey Gowdy is an honorable man. He is respect. He's a former prosecutor who knows, knows how to go about it. And he's done it in a way, I would encourage you to look at the way that he's approached this. He's, it, he has approached it in a way where he is asking questions and he has not made it political. So, so were you disappointed when you heard uh, McCarthy say what he said? Why, why did he say what he said? I mean, he seemed to be saying, look, we did this and her poll numbers came down. He seemed to be saying that this committee was designed to, to bring down Hillary Clinton. Yeah. This, 
from day one, this committee and Trey Gowdy has made every effort to make this about getting answers mm -hmm. a, as far as what happened that evening. It, um, and, and we have a responsibility to do that. So what's going to happen when uh, we get to December and, you know, now it's going to be McCarthy's problem and uh, you have to come up with a, a more enduring solution for uh, doing all that Congress still has to do, including the basic function of keeping the government uh, uh, funded. Mm -hmm. How are you going to get agreement among this, uh, this group that you have to convene together every week uh, when they couldn't even agree on a temporary funding measure? We, we, need to, we need to do our jobs. We need to come to the table. We need to negotiate. House, Compromise? Senate. Compromise? We need, yes. We need to figure out how we can reach some common ground and, and move forward. I think we recognize, I recognize that we got to, uh, it is uh, in our best interest to keep this government funded. Uh, and yes, we will debate funding levels. We will de debate priorities. Um, and Republicans will bring certain priorities to the table. Democrats will bring certain priorities to the table, but this is regular order, right? And there's a lot of calls right now for regular order. And regular order is when the House produces a product, the Senate, and then you come to a conference committee or you come together and you figure out how you can uh, agree on something to move forward. And the way you did that last time is Paul Ryan got together with Patty Murray. Yes. Um, and you were able to come up with a, with a solution that kind yes. of averted crisis right. for, for two years. But right. now that's that's expiring. You've got the debt ceiling. We yes. face the possibility of default. Yes. And you've got uh, this, this uh, question of how to fund the government with the Planned Parenthood issue hanging out. And you have a large portion of your conference, Republicans in the House, who say that they'd rather shut the government down um, than, than see Planned Parenthood continue to get funding. And some who say that they don't want to raise the debt ceiling, uh, you know, no matter what. How, yeah. how do you deal with that? Yeah. What, what, what we are doing, what we are proposing as it relates to Planned Parenthood, and there, these, these videos have raised serious concerns, and, and it is appropriate that we do an investigation. So we are going to be launching a, an investigation. Um, we've been calling for a one-year uh, hold on the funding that would go to Planned Parenthood, transferring it to federally qualified clinics, and allow us some time to really to really ask some questions. Um, it you know there should not be taxpayer funding used for abortions, and this is an which this, is the, which is the current law which is the current law, and and that is through our investigation. We're going to ask those questions, and we're going to get some clarity. And I, and I think people should recognize that that is, that is a, an appropriate path for us to take, and it's a, a thoughtful approach to some really um, concerning videos that have been released. Well, that's going to be quite a battle. I want to, we, don't, we, we don't have much time left. I, I've got to ask you about the presidential campaign. I, I believe I, I noticed uh, this morning that the current frontrunner is still a gentleman from New York named Donald Trump. What are the chances that he's the Republican nominee? I don't see it happening. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump is a great entertainer, and his, his slogan, Make America Great, has certainly struck a chord. Um, but I, I, I'm very proud of the fact that we have a very diverse field. I think that that is... That is um, it's exciting to see the Republicans that, are, that we have U.S. senators, we have governors, we have people from the private sector that have been very successful. I look at where we are as a party and, you know, the Republicans, we want to be the party of the future. We want to be the party that is really um, embracing new, new ways, you know, challenging the status quo and, and addressing outdated models that are not meeting the needs. Look at, the, look at these agencies. Look at, the, look at the Veterans Administration that is failing our veterans. I mean, these are, these are outdated models. And I'm excited about a party that is really um, not just on the presidential side, in the House right now. We have the next generation of conservative leadership. We are, uh, we've had two-thirds of the Republicans in the House elected in the last five years or less. You know, there's been a lot of turnover, there's a lot of new blood, there's, and there's people that ran for office because they're really concerned 
about the direction this country is taking, but even more fund fundamental than that, I believe that there is a fundamental fear that we are losing our government, that we are losing representative government. When you see so many decisions being made outside of Congress, uh, outs you know, being made by the, legis or by the administration, by the executive branch, or by the judicial branch. No matter if you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, you should believe in the power and the decision making that belongs in the legislative branch. And that is what I believe is the number one priority right now, is to restore trust and confidence in the legislative branch on behalf of the people of this country. So if we can do our jobs, if we can figure out how to be more effective in the legislative branch, restore the trust on Capitol Hill, I believe that's the best thing that we could do for people all across this country. All right, well, it's going to be quite okay. a challenge in the okay. weeks ahead. Thank you very much. Kathleen Lawrence Rogers, appreciate it. Great, thank you. Thank you.